It's time for an eBay unboxing. This is those one, one of those, you know, I took a chance type of deal. And so the seller had this as an opening bid of $100, make an offer. I offered $60. Pictures were not very good. So I took a chance on it. And I cannot believe they accepted my $60 offer unless, let's just hope this thing is okay. All right, so sometimes you get these sellers and they, they really don't make uh, very good descriptions or take very good pictures. So, and you don't want to ask for more pictures. You don't want to ask more questions. And I'll tell you why. Because if it is something that's rare or uh, more valuable, uh, they will start Googling it. And they will start wondering why you're asking that many questions. You don't want to, it's like a bluffing game. You don't want them to know how interested you are in something because then it makes them more interested in finding out what it may be. And so you may blow your chance of getting a sleeper. I call these type of things sleepers if they're good. So we don't know yet. I'm not doing the hurrah dance yet. And holy guacamole. I thought it was going to be tiny. This thing is heavy. It weighs at least a pound and a half. At least, if not more. I thought it was going to be like, like itsy bitsy. You follow what I'm saying? All right, let's just hope it's good. All right, he packed it very well. Sorry for my lousy manicure. I know my nails are very chippy looking. I don't, I don't pay for professional manicures, as you can tell. I get very self-conscious, by the way. All right, so. All right, I'm nervous. I'm nervous in the service. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God, guys, I know, I know, I know. I'm very passionate. I'm very passionate about these old things. <gasps> this is freaking beautiful. Now, this is supposed to come out, by the way. So that's not that's not an issue, okay? These used to come out of the holders. It has the original perfume. This is a perfume bottle. It has the original perfume in the bottom. You see that? I can clean this. This will be as shiny as a new penny. But uh, yeah, this is French. This is very, very, very French. Look at this. Usually Baccarat in France made this type of glass. This is in the uh, French Napoleon style, Napoleonic or Rococo style. Here we go. I'm going to probably pronounce that wrong. But this is a perfume atomizer bottle. Let's actually lower the camera and take a good look at it. I'm going to lower it some more. Oh, my God. Okay, so these atomizer bottles are getting harder and harder to find. They were generally made from about, I'm going to say, the very, very, very late 1890s all the way through the 20s. And uh, it's very hard to figure out how old they are. Sometimes they have markings. But look at this uh, beautiful hobnail pattern. This is cut glass. It is not pressed or molded. Now, it is missing. It would have had a little cap, and a chain would have hung from this little part, just so you don't lose the cap. But apparently that broke off. No big deal. No big deal whatsoever. See, it has a little hole where a chain would have connected. And then the cap would have, like, if you wanted to spray your perfume, you'd unscrew that. The cap would dangle down so you don't lose the cap. And then you'd put it back on. That is not a problem. This can be actually unscrewed off. But really not a problem at all. This is in fantastic condition. Now, this was the more expensive version. They made these in silver gilt or nickel, nickel-plated uh, metal, or the Doré bronze. And this is why it's so heavy. It's Doré bronze. Usually, the gold, the gold or the Doré uh, or Ormolu, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, don't know, don't care, uh, is generally worn off to hell. Like, I'm not kidding you, it's all scratched up and worn off. But this one is beautiful. Let's go ahead and take a look at this glass pattern. You can see the mechanisms inside. This is a piston pump atomizer bottle. And one like this is worth a pretty, pretty penny. Look at the uh, workmanship on the top. Holy cow. Now, how this works is you press this centerpiece down and twist it with your finger. It should pop up. Imagine it doesn't. Oh, there we go. Okay. And you would depress. Hold on. I'm just going to, okay, you would depress this up and down, and the perfume would dispense. Now, these were not very popular, and I'll tell you why. They were not very popular. Let me just adjust my camera. They were not very popular at all because of one fact, and one fact alone. They leaked. 
they leaked all over ladies' gloves. So um, I don't know if you can see in this area, the perfume would leak right out of there, and it would get all over. Now, ladies used to wear kid leather gloves. They would leak all over the gloves and stain them up. So this uh, did not last very long. Let's just put it that way. It was not very popular. I'm going to look around for some marks. Sometimes you can find uh, maker's mark stamped inside of here. I'm going to look all around. Sometimes there was a maker by the name of uh, Theophilius Martin that used to make pieces like this. Sometimes you can find markings in the metal where it will tell you where it was made. Now this one is probably telling me that it's an earlier one. Let me unscrew the top. And sometimes you will find the markings inside here. Look at this mechanism. Look at the way this was built. This is really sensationally amazing. You see this little this little rod? This would have drew up the perfume. It would go into a spring-loaded mechanism and it used to leak. Let me see if it smells like perfume. Mmm, it smells so good. It smells so good. Let me smell it. Oh my God, the perfume. It's the best smelling perfume that I probably ever smelled in my life. It's very musky, not musky, maybe spicy. Hold on. Mmm. Okay, so it smells flowery, but yet it has a little bit of a, a musk, maybe a musk to it. Almost like a, mmm, I'm trying to guess like a cedar. Like a cedar smell or a little bit of a peppery smell. I really like it. All right. So let's go ahead and put this back in here. I'm going to just slightly, slightly uh, clean the metal because you don't want any kind of verdigris on it. But this is, wow, this is amazing. I am not going to clean the inside of the bottle because we have the original perfume in there. I really don't want to mess with it. You can. You can get a bottle brush and clean it out. But the problem is, is to get the interior of this jar dry, uh, you'll put the cap back on it and then it'll fog up and then it'll be a bitch, you know, to, uh, by the way, look at that. You don't even need that. If you cleaned out the bottom, you didn't need the bottom. It's just that pretty. But uh, yeah, you don't want to fog up the glass. I'm looking inside the column to try to see if I see any maker's marks. I believe this may have been a Sarah Felix one made by Sarah Felix. Could have most likely been made by Sarah Felix. But look at the, look at the French garland going around that that is just oh my god it's fantastic look at that all right i'll be right back i'm going to clean it up just a little bit I'm just going to raise up my camera hold on and uh i'll be right back all right so all i did was a light silver polishing rag just to get any verdigris off of it but it is stunning it is beautiful it is just like everything i ever hoped and dreamed it would be it's actually very large they made very tiny ones too and so this is considered one of the larger ones and beautiful beautiful baccarat glass hand cut glass let's uh take a look at this now this is just not glass this is actually crystal and so this is baccarat crystal one of the finest glass that you can actually get i'm going to show you a couple of pieces that are in my collection and then we're going to find out the history about these bottles. So here are just a few in my collection. We have this uh, beautiful Bohemian one back here. Look at that one. That was uh, Bohemian also. Look at the enamel work. So I have uh, th this one right here. This is uh, one of those piston pumps. Here's another piston pump atomizer bottle. Here's uh, another one. See, they, they made them smaller also. Here's another beautiful one with cut crystal Baccarat glass. This one was, I believe, made by Theophilius Martin. And here we got more. As you can see, I love these type of uh, piston pump atomizer bottles. This uh, this one over here. Look at the uh, button on the top of that. Look at that. That's uh, really amazing with enamel work. Yes, I collect antique teddy bears too. This is an ideal bear from the 1920s. Really cool. All right, this guy is probably from the 20s or 30s as well. But here's uh, some more beautiful crystal perfume bottles. And I also have powder boxes and jewel boxes made out of crystal. But you can see we have some piston pump atomizer bottles here. This, wow, look at this. This is a, a German bottle right there. This is another French, uh, look at this. It's a three-piece crystal Baccarat glass 
perfume set. But here we go. Here's another piston pump atomizer bottle. This is hobnail with uh, green and uh, clear glass. That's a piston pump. There's one behind it. I don't want to move anything because it, that one's purple, a purple and clear um, hobnail pattern. Here we have another one. Look at this little teeny tiny one here. The last time I pulled something out to show you guys, I broke a hundred year old bottle. So I'm definitely not going in there. Here we have a antique French Palais Royale bottle, clam broth in color back there. I'm trying to show you the uh, purple. Ugh, I don't want to really touch my bottles, but there we go. There's the purple and there's the green. So I have like a, a pair of them. Uh, the other one, the purple one is bigger, actually. It's very hard. It's getting harder and harder to find these piston pump atomizer bottles and especially for cheap. Yes, I even have more bottles up here. More bottles in here. This is a lot of these are Art Deco from the 20s and 30s. Even we even have antique ones in here as well. Oh, and there's another piston pump atomizer. This one is, you see how the, uh, this is like mine, the one I got today. See the gold work on it? But look how bad, look how badly uh, discolored the top got on that one. And uh, that is a French one with a beautiful uh, French Baccarat glass with the uh, gold doré going throughout it. But uh, unfortunately, that happens to these. And that's why I was so excited that I got such a really good quality one today. Oh, yes. I have lots of perfume bottles, as you can see here. Antique and Art Deco. We even have a Marcel Frank. Uh, this is a Bohemian perfume bottle. I even have the original ad from 1922. And I have the same exact bottle right down here. I don't know if you can see that. But there we go. There's that same bottle. And made by Moser in Czechoslovakia. Now, I'm going to show you my largest one. So my largest, by the way, this is an 1800s perfume bottle, about 1890s, with the original perfume in it. Never opened. Queen Bess perfume. All right, so let's go down here. Yes, I even collect opera glasses. <laughs> Very old opera glasses, jewel boxes. And here we go. This is the largest piston pump atomizer that I have. And it's ruby red uh, cut to clear. So there we go. Very, very cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Every time I come to the china cabinet, I notice things that I, I forgot I even had. This is an 1850s hair bracelet. Victorian, made out of hair. I have more hair jewelry back there. And uh, yeah, that's a Dutch silver bottle with porcelain right back there. Uh, and I just noticed, look at these, I have Georgian era snuff boxes made out of cowrie shells. One with mother of pearl on the bottom with it all hand carving and the other with silver. And uh, I just noticed this beautiful box. Let me just, uh, yeah, I got a lot of antique teddy bears in here. And I just, yep, I just noticed this. Oh my God, it's all dusty. I had to clean out this thing. Oh, isn't that so pretty? Look at that. So these little pill boxes also are things or patch boxes that I collect as well. My favorite type of uh, perfume bottles to collect are these Chatelaine ones. The ones that would have hang or hung uh, from a lady's belt hook uh, by her waist. I love these types. This is opaline glass or opaline glass. I never pronounced that uh, correctly. Really uh, cool. Look at that. We got the finger ring and this would have uh, attached to a lady's belt. Along with having an antique collection, especially of glass, is you always worry you're going to break something. So I'm constantly a nervous wreck that there's going to be an earthquake. These, by the way, are uh, gold. Yes, these are gold. Real gold opera glasses from the 1800s. Look how beautiful that is. Thank you, seller. Thank you so much. You just made all my hopes and dreams come true because... I could not have afforded what this would have sold for. If people would have noticed this, it was just listed. You placed uh, the opening bid at 100. You gave it to me for 60. God bless you. Some of these piston pump atomizers can go for, yes, that much money. And uh, here's one. I can never pronounce this correctly. Lalique Glass. And it's a piston pump. Now, this is the chain I was telling you about that would have dangled from mine. And we're going to check out some more. Some of them don't go for very much money. And here's another Lalique. And people passed. It, it passed. Nobody wanted to even pay 400 euros to 600 uh, euros for that. And uh, this is dated from 1924. Really beautiful. 
Let's uh, continue to check out some more pieces. Some of them, again, they're pretty affordable. And this is a Theophilia Martin crystal one, but it's missing the top. So would you pay $175 for it with it missing the top? Hell no. Every time I'm trying to film a video, my one dog is always barking, so I just stuck him out. He might be scratching on the door. Yeah, ignore him. Okay, so here's one, uh, Theophilius Martin one that's being sold for $549. You can see these get really worn out. The It's only like nickel plated. And this one has uh, the gold dore going around it, or ormolu, and it's green glass, which is quite pretty. Let's check it out. This one... Yeah, it, it, it really gets shot, guys. It would have a TM marking if it was the Aphelius Mar uh, Martin. You see, and they do come out of the little holders. And this one has uh, green glass. This is not your best. This is uh, one I would avoid to uh, add to my collection. It's just, ah, eh, it's nothing special. Very plain. $76. And they have an ad. They have an actual ad. From the 1890s. So we know that these were made from the 1890s, which is pretty cool. Let's find the ad. I like when people do this. So here is an ad right here. Uh, and they called it a Vapor Wrist Droit Nouveau, meaning new, new system. And uh, they were only sold for 40, uh, 75 francs for the largest one in Doré Gold. So the ones that were in Doré Gold were like double the uh, price almost. All right, and then just the plain metal was 25 francs, 35 francs, and 40 francs. And you can see the three different sizes that they're uh, showing. Another type you will find in this shape, in a round shape, you don't see those ones too often. This one is nickel, nickel metal. And again, they sell for, you know, they sell for a lot of money, unfortunately. This is a smaller one selling for $225. Now, you can find these for under 100 bucks. You just got to look. And uh, a lot of them don't even work. A lot of the piston pumps are seized up and they don't work at all. They're, they're broken or the buttons on the top are actually missing. And uh, the sellers, uh, actually some of them don't even know that you just turn it clockwise or counterclockwise and then the top pops up, which is pretty cool. Only real hardcore perfume collector, perfume bottle collectors buy these. So a lot of regular people who just collect perfume bottles, like, you know, an occasional perfume bottle, don't know about these. These are a hidden secret for now. Unless, I hope I didn't just let the cat out of the bag. I don't want all you crack maniacs out there starting to buy these up, and then I can't afford them. And so occasionally you can find these for $50 or less. In my case, the seller was kind enough to let me have this for 60 which was really nice of them. Uh, they could have probably gotten at least... Uh, on eBay, eBay prices. eBay always trends 50% less than their value because people are looking to flip the items they buy on eBay. It's a known fact. Uh -huh. And uh, so this on eBay would sell for about $150 if a bunch of bidders, you know, sought this out and found this. But if this was put on, say, Etsy, Ruby Lane, First Dibs, a higher class, you know, selling venue, this would sell for between $350 to $575 all day long because it is that beautiful. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. See you guys all soon. And don't collect these. I'm telling you now, don't collect these. They're mine. All mine. I'm a greedy bastard. And uh, I don't want you guys to like these at all. They're terrible. Yes, they're horrible. They're, they're the most awful uh, antique perfume, uh, perfume bottles you can collect. I mean, absolutely bar none, the worst. You don't want them. Thanks for watching. See you guys all soon and so long.